Welcome to another episode of Women and Run Stories and on today's episode I'm going to host uh Stephen Yamongo. Yes. I'm a person living with disabilities. So it's such a pleasure to come to your episode. And uh today we're going to talk about uh the people who live differently, people who have unique abilities and here I am. Yeah. As you heard from him today is Stephen Yamongo and he's going to take us through life as a unique person. So Nyamongo. Yes. Yeah. Trombi <clears throat> like your life when you discover you are uko na unique uko unique. Uh when did you discover that in Tanzania? Okay, basically, uh-huh. uh being born you you it's like waking up and you find that there are things you can't do on your own. Uh-huh. Uh like personally, I have a prosthetic leg. I was born with a condition known as Amelia. Uh-huh. So, it's something you don't uh, discover. It's something you wake up to find out that you are physically challenged. Uh-huh. Okay? So, it's something uh, you wake up to being uh being born and being raised as a person living with disabilities uh it was a challenge at first but then you come to learn you have friends you have your parents your siblings and the people who are around yeah. and then they they work as much as possible to help you through but uh, personally you have to work yourself out yeah, yeah. Because most of, most of the time you're with yourself, yeah. So even if somebody is trying to help you, there's there's only much they can do to help you. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that was so basically uh, when you discovered like those kind of like a unique ability was when you were a kid when you say when you, when you when you when you saw that you can you can you can do things that people are doing normally and you need assistance and help. Yes. And. And how how has the journey been so far as a in your childhood? How was the how was the experience? Uh basically I started school at a special school uh-huh. where you have other kids who are uh, also challenged. Yes. There are those who are mentally challenged, there are those who are blind, there are those who are who, who have hearing impairment and uh, us who are physically challenged, something that is physical you can see. Yeah. So basically you you uh growing up with other people who are challenged is not as much a big a deal as coming to a society where people are okay yeah. people can do their own things so they view you as a different person yeah. uh, uh compared to being in a school where or an institution where all of you are just under the same category yeah yeah so personally mm-hmm. uh um my question is do you feel like uh like for you as an individual well do you feel like you should you, you could have survived in a normal school setup okay instead of going to a disabled instead of going to, instead of going to a school for the disabled i think basically starting at a school where uh, we it, as, at a special school yeah. it was a chance uh, most children don't go through uh-huh. me personally i say it was a very good chance because i understood that it's not a personal problem yeah there are also other people other people like you so yeah. there's that acceptance yeah and there's that blending in yeah so for now i think that answers my question so for now like kids who have disabilities they're better off starting off in, in a, a special, school. special school yeah because special of, institutions oh yeah the people who are they interact with yeah. it's like interacting with your tribesmen it's better at first than coming to face people who don't even know you or will never relate with what you're going through yeah yeah and they end up probably judging or they don't or they lack the capacity to understand what you're going through yeah yeah and so going to your childhood stages so starting off at the school how did you go from there uh i started at a very young age almost three and a half years uh-huh. and then i transferred to a normal school which was a boarding school my yeah. parents really worked so that uh, uh, actually i was raised by a single mother mm. 
So she worked to get me to a boarding school. And because when was that? When was that? How that was then? back like I started at a special mm-hmm. school back in 1999. Uh-huh. Uh, then I transferred in 2005 to a boarding school. 2005, which class were you in? Or which grade? That was back uh, 2005, I was in class four. Uh-huh. Then 2006, I was in class five. Yeah. That's when I transferred to a normal school setting. Um, yeah. And go on, how was the experience going to a normal school? Uh, that was hell. <laughs> it was very challenging actually. Mm. Because I had made friends. You see, there are those childhood friends you'd, you'd rather not be separated from. They become uh, like family. Yeah. So I had grown with these other kids and we were like, okay, this is, a, this is who we are. Yeah. It's okay. But now going to a normal setting with other kids, you know, kids are very cheeky. They don't, they don't see anything they do is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually, actually a reality because they say kids are the most heartless they, people. They will torment you, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, so go on. So no, that time the experience was, was the way you said it was mean. It was horrible. Yeah. Um, Basically, you see, trying to to experience life with other kids uh, yeah. who feel like they uh, have advantage over you, yeah, it's quite a challenge. And how did you cope with that that setup? Uh, and through going through all those challenges with the other kids and all that, how did you cope with it? Actually, the best way to to deal with kids, uh, among your age mates, yeah. is to prove that you are better than them. Yeah, basically you had to work uh, harder, yeah. but it was also challenging mentally. You can't concentrate if at all you are facing some mental issues. Yeah. Like uh, in the current world, Sai, most people are advocating about mental health, yeah. which is an issue also facing not only normal people, but also people with disabilities. Yeah. Because this is something that you are living with day in, day out, minute after minute. So being a child, when you see another child uh, tormenting you, it's like, it's a setback, it's a major setback. To your education, to your normal life, it's a major setback. So proving yourself to be better than them makes them even more zealous to even torment you. But it had to be, you had to make friends with them, yeah. the first thing, so that you familiarize and show them that you are as normal as they are. Yeah. And so and so from there on, how is it done in the relation from primary school going into high school? Uh, primary was good. Uh-huh. So basically after familiarizing these kids, they now come to realize that as much as different as you are, it doesn't make you less of a human being uh-huh. or less of a child or a normal person. So they come to accept you and they realize that anything they can do, you can do it. So they accept it. You see, you see, people look down upon you when they feel like you can't do what they, you can do. Uh, yes, what they can do if you can't, they set challenges so that they can see if, are you a mate, am I, are we equals? So if, if you prove that you can do it, then they relax and say, okay. They make peace with it actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so from there, in high school, in like in high school, mm-hmm. did you transition to a, a special special school or just a, you, had, you, you continued the normal setup? It was a normal setup. I really wished I had joined a special school, oh. but it wasn't possible. Yeah. Uh, though I joined a very good school, yeah. and then it was good because school, here. Which school did you join for high school? Uh, it was Nyambaria, uh-huh. Nyambaria yeah. High School. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very good school actually. It ended up being, a, it's a national school right now. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, here, going to, transitioning to high school was a little bit uh, comfortable because I had now realized that people have to understand who you are yeah. before they accept you into their lives, actually. Yeah. yeah. You had learned how to cope with this. You, you had your own coping mechanisms. Yeah. That's you had put in place. So, you, regardless of whatever's going to happen, you're still going to survive in that. So I had a little problem with uh, a few teachers. Mm-hmm. So also you you had to work with also teachers. So as much as you're working with students, so you have also to work with the teachers. Mm-hmm. 
so some teachers are like okay if if you can't do what others are doing they want to make you they want to incorporate you into them but uh, actually uh, people with disability are different they just don't wake up and do something so like uh, basically me I was facing issues where I grew up as an introvert so to the point that uh, social life wasn't my thing going out and doing some stuff it wasn't my thing but I really worked to participate even in the school uh, uh, festivals music festivals I performed at a music festival once though I was also dealing with social anxiety now you are into high school you are maturing your adolescence is kicking in and now you have to work with now understanding who you are so basically adolescence also affects people with disabilities because now you realize you have to re- to interact with people in a different way yeah so like the journey after high school since mm-hmm. the high school experience was that was seems seemed to be fairly well uh not really okay. because here uh i i had an episode where i had to deal with social anxiety oh social anxiety yes so you are into campus uh, and here you are facing different walks of life. Uh, Everyone is like working on their own right now. Yeah. People, I'm an adult now, I'm working on my life. So making peers, making friends wasn't that easy. No classmates, yeah. wako. But uh, also I faced that episode of social anxiety. It was weird. You know? It was that part that I'm, I'm trying to express myself to the world, incorporate myself to the world, uh, where everyone is working to attain their goals. And I'm here also at trying to, to make it my way. Uh, and yeah. and you're, you're, you're trying to make it with the other way. As a, as a unique person, you're trying to make it also with, with other people. Yeah. And that's, that's because it's a challenge for you. Uh, it was a challenge, actually, yeah. because you are meeting new people. Uh, it was it isn't easy actually for me uh, it wasn't easy so i've really worked uh let's say my social anxiety is now i can say i'm overcoming it yeah. to the point that i can go out socialize with people yeah. so i was dealing with that situation where if i'm meeting you you are a stranger i don't know you i just go into that episode it kicks in and you're like okay you have an anxiety attack. yeah but I really have worked on it. Uh, uh, and how, just take us through, how have you managed to work through it? Because uh, there's so many people experience anxiety attacks. Yes. Or panic attacks, most of them make sense. How do, you, how do you handle it? How do you go through it? Actually, it's about understanding other people. The thing is, it's about feeling inferior before other people. Mm. And it's not something that you can control. Yeah. It's, you know yourself, you know your limits. Mm. So you feel like, this is my limit. I can't go past this, and I need to perfect. I'm, I, I, I love perfection, doing things to perfection. Mm. So you feel like I'm not enough socially to interact with the other people. So if I'm not enough, then I'm not helping you. If I'm not helping you, I'm not perfectioning who I am. So that's a challenge. So but you come to understand that with different people and different. Uh, uh, limits and uh, abilities yeah. uh, it's okay to be to be lesser or to be at a position where you can't be a perfectionist yeah. so like socially people expect uh, different things but uh, you see the, ang- the anxiety attacks comes in when you feel like you can't be the perfect person the other guy is looking for uh. so if I'm not perfect that's when it kicks in so you have to work and understand that each and every person has different abilities and trying to work as much as possible you have to work to be better so that you can be better for the others yeah so basically for now people just have to accept like you have to accept yourself where you are yeah your and limits you don't have to be perfect you don't have to just have to accept the way yourself the way you are yeah. just be, be okay with where you are don't put pressure on yourself yeah most of the time it's putting pressure on yourself that's yeah. when social anxiety comes in and, and and i think that's from from the from the from the from the cases i've come across yeah. online 
most of them are online mm. or person who have, have, have met from from what they say about panic attacks and anxiety it's, it's very bad mm. it's very bad and it's, it's totally out of control it's something yeah. that you, have you, to, you don't control it you don't control it just happens on its own mm. anyway so quickly going into your transition into into life after high school mm. so did you enroll for uh like in a high institution uh university yeah in a high, like university or a tertiary or uh after after completing my form 4 i i qualified for university yeah. i went to pani university it was a good institution yeah. i pursued biochemistry yeah. so basically it was a study back to my room nothing major and i really felt back uh, if uh, i really had something else to do apart from going to class and doing something else actually i do draw but it it really affected my mind to a point that i couldn't just concentrate upon anything yeah. you are at that point where you just have to relax your mind totally classes go back to your room maybe have some food and then you sleep a lot i used to sleep a lot yeah. It was more of a copy. It was, it was, it was a better, it was a better copy mechanism than being out there. Yeah, and I think it was better because if I didn't uh, go to class and then back to my room to sleep, yeah. maybe I could have joined maybe uh, group uh, drug groups, which is most of the cases where people face who are going through social anxiety. Yeah. They feel like uh, maybe alcohol, other drugs are a better alternative to to. To silence the mind, maybe. And even given, given that cost is really a hotbed for drugs. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and so, how's your experience throughout the four years in campus? Campus was good. Uh, Education-wise, it was uh, a place I really admired because we had the best uh, facilities, and the lecturers were good too. Our classmates. Uh, basically, I really thought I couldn't bother people with my star. So it's also another thing. Uh, I, I really love private life. It's better I, I die alone than telling someone else. I think I really thought nobody could help me. Yeah. yeah. Until, 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 the, until, until, until I started experiencing that proper part to you. So... Inclusivity. The, the, the inclusivity came in, uh, most of my friends started uh, getting worried, so they used to come to my room and uh, ask me how I'm doing. Uh, and then I realized it was not about me, it was about, or, or it's not about the other people. Yeah. So basically you understand that involving yourself with the other people is a good step to, so to meeting your social anxiety. Mutual. Yeah. Because everyone has limits yeah. everyone has their own limitations so but some point uh, those people who undergo social anxiety they are overweight they're overwhelmed by their situations so they feel like they are far worse than any other person so if you understand that other people have limits and have their let's say their challenges things they go through you, you come to understand that you are not you are not alone. Other people have these situations, but they really try as much as possible to understand that as much as I have limits and challenges, yeah. we can beat them by involving socially. Yeah. Most of the time, social anxiety is a point where people need to understand that it's not about you, it's, it's all of us. You involve all of us and it gets to a better position where you come to see the other people and they see you who you are okay. yeah and so after that and in campus mm -hmm. or in that setup what mm -hmm. do you feel like um like people who are not people who are not unique mm -hmm. should, should 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 do so that they can interact with the, with the people who are unique uh, actually in a healthy way actually so uh, is, that, is that inclusivity Let's say yeah. being being different or being physically or uh, challenged, uh, being yeah. a unique person, yeah. it's it's about uh, let's say God gave us different abilities, yeah. yes, and to to define the difference, yeah. 
we had to be created differently okay so much of the time people see themselves as uh, problems which is not true uh, we are actually the definition of different or uh, no, uh, most of the time people go through uh, rough times it makes them feel that they are worse which is not okay they actually should understand that it's the definition of different yeah, yes. just, just, it's just in, in its own way. The natural definition of different, yeah. different people, unique people. Yeah. So someone feeling like they are disadvantaged, like you don't have a limb or a leg or you are impaired physically, yeah. is not a, a bad thing, it's the definition of different. Yeah, it's just being different. Yeah, yeah. That's where most people should start seeing it from. Yeah. So if we see it that way, yes. then we can understand that. The person who's able to run yeah. is not much better off than you if you can't. Yeah. So like most of the time I used to feel like if I'm missing a limb, I can't run, I can't participate in these uh, activities. Yeah. So it could come as a down, as a setback. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and when did you finish uh, your course at one? Uh, back in 2018, I graduated at 2018, yeah. December 20th, yeah. And how life after the transition from life in campus, mm. now you are more into like the real adult adult life. Yeah. You have to be, independence you comes have to be, in. You have to be independent. You have to go out there and create a life for yourself. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Ah, that was a major, a major life-changing situation yeah. where you understand that uh, most most youths, uh, they say that there is a challenge about employment, yeah. which was which is a common uh, problem or challenge to to the country or as a world, yeah. as a population. So here you uh, you graduate and you have that uh, that mentality in you, understanding that they, there is no job. But actually, I really tried, and uh, I had to beat that out of my head. And uh, I, I tried to work at different places. Uh, at some point, I worked at a restaurant uh, as a cook. I love cooking. Uh, I re I, and it was a good experience, actually, because here you interact with every person, every walk of life, from a drunkard to a professional. So it was a very uh, it's a point where I really encourage other people. It's not about the formal work that you'll get. You can at least work at a place where you start small. Because as much as you've graduated, it's not the point where you just graduate and find what you want. Yes? You, you start small. Yes? I even tried... It's part of the process. You have, to, you, have, you have at least to start from somewhere. It's a process. You can't, you can't, you can't skip the process. And that's the biggest disadvantage we have upon our people. They, they get to understand that if I've gone through school, I really have to get employed where I've been studying. Yeah. Yes. So basically, me, I worked. Uh, I studied biochemistry, so yeah. I really expected that the big laboratories, the big institutions, the research institutions, they just hire you. But that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, basically, someone's life is a process. Yes? From where you're born to where you're going is a process. So the steps that we take, the little steps that we take, it's an encouragement to each and every person that they should start somewhere, not basically where they want to be, but uh, according to our, our, our society today, yeah. uh, you need some, some funds as a young person, as an adult. Uh, maybe there are those who are born into families where they are fair off, but basically me, my family wasn't that fair off. So I really, I really, it was something that impacted me to work, to think out of the box. You think, you work somewhere, you have some, maybe some chicken, you keep chicken, you sell eggs, you work at different places, you find some money, you do your own stuff, you do some funding, some little funding for yourself. As much as your parent would want to chip in, thinking that uh, my son is going through some situations, yeah. at least uh, uh, we can, you can try to work out some few things. Yeah. And 
I'm just going to that. Mm-hmm. You said you've worked as a cook. Mm-hmm. You started from there and you have the experience. How, how did, how did, like as a disabled person or as a mm-hmm. unique person, mm-hmm. um, how did you be able to, to do that, that job? Because I know cooking requires really, really it's, it's, it's effort. Really effort. How, how, did you, how did you maneuver that? Because <sighs> Actually, it's it's believing in yourself. Some things you you don't have to. And then in a restaurant, there there are always orders coming in every it, every other every other minute. It it was actually a restaurant combined with a let's say a, a bar. Yeah. So here you are dealing with the people who who are who are who will go through different walks of life from drunks. To normal people. It gave you that. It was like you're watching a movie scene unfold, yeah. and, and you're, you're experiencing different people every day, yeah. every other hour. Uh, so cook, cooking is a passion, and as much as you go and uh, approach someone and tell them you can work, yeah. if someone gives you that chance, yeah. they expect the best. Me, I love doing anything I do. It's to perfection. Yeah. Though some challenges, yeah. some few setbacks. Yeah. But once someone realizes that you are committed to working, they'll give you that chance. Yes, they'll give you that chance and tell you, okay, if you can really work and you show your work, it's good. So most of the customers could say, okay, we loved that person. The way they cooked, they, they didn't consider that I was physically challenged or in some way. But if they loved your work, that's out of consideration. Yeah. And just... How did you learn? How did you manage to get that job? Uh, Were there any challenges getting that job? Uh, uh, actually, at first, uh, yeah. my friends, I talked to one of my friends. Uh, he took me to this place. It's uh, at local. It's it's a local restaurant back at home. It's uh, our home is not uh, basically a big town, but uh, at this place, someone. Uh, my friends recommended me. Yeah. They said this guy can work. And, and where's home? Home is Kisi. Okay. Back in Kisi, uh, local Mogonga. Yeah. So here, people, uh, the guy who recommended me said this guy can work really well. Yeah. And uh, after he had recommended me, there I was given that opportunity. Yeah. First day at work, and they loved it. Uh-huh. And they said, okay, we can, we can do you that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. And 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 personally, as mm. a unique person, mm. um, what do you feel that the that the that needs to be addressed mm. with the employers and people taking in disabled people? Uh, actually, it's not about uh, sensitizing the people yeah. who are going to employ you. Yeah. It's about starting with yourself because. Any person who is physically able or not challenged in in any case, they are working and you are competing for the same sport. Yes, so you can't say that uh, to some point you can favor people, but to some point it's the work that you, you are producing, the product, what you are doing. Yes. And uh, g- given to that, the, the government at this point has uh, that 5% policy. They are 5% of the workers at every institution, yeah. at every government institution, have to be people with disabilities yeah. or the unique individuals. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very good policy. Yeah. And again... Uh, and you feel like it should, it should be increased from 5% to a higher percentage? It should, yeah. because... We have very many people yeah. who are living with disability, mm-hmm. but they haven't gotten that chance. Oh, okay. okay. Most of the time, uh, these people, uh, the population is not that big, mm-hmm. so they are not everyone who is qualified for that pos- particular position. Even if we had 100% uh, uh, policy yeah. or 50% policy, yeah. okay. The population for people living with disability, the ratio is not as 50-50 with people who are normal. So the point that we can say the percentage can be increased, it's okay. It's a good it's a good starting point. And again, we have to make sure that these people first to get to these positions, they have to go through school. 
schools policy about school so they also they so they also the systems have to put in place for people. you can't have positions to employ if you have ne- you haven't trained these yeah. people so it's a whole system thing. it's a whole system thing yeah, yeah. It's fair enough. Yeah. So that's really what you, even the the employers, the government, the systems need to check on that. Yeah. And then um, personally, away from away from away from work, education, mm-hmm. how like as a, a unique person, mm-hmm. does it? How do you cope with the with the like the the dating market, the, the relationship? Uh, relationships, relationships are actually a very a very complicated situation yeah. not only for people living in disability or unique people but everyone because it's who you are that people want it's not that you don't just wake up and say you want this person it's it's a process you work on yourself you don't go to the shop and get a product that you don't feel comfortable with. Mm. So if I don't work upon myself, there's nobody I can be compatible to. Mm. Yes. So I have to be compatible to other people so that they can be compatible back to me. Yeah. 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 Because if you are compatible with someone, it doesn't matter if you are disabled. They don't see that. They don't actually. see that. Somebody um, will love you for who you are. Actually, uh, people have so so many limits yeah. that, uh, let's say, for people living with disability or the unique people, ours is portrayed physically. Yeah. But there are some people whose limits, they are inside. Internal. They are mental. So the more, the, for them, that, if I find that they can't be seen. These issues can't be seen. Yeah. So you can say, like, someone is missing a limb. Let me lend him a hand. Let me carry him around. Yeah. But let's say there's someone here who's facing mental issues. Mm. You see, no matter how good he, he looks, yeah. if he can't be compatible to other people, then that's a challenge, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a very big challenge. It's yeah. Very big one. Mm. It's not even compared to being physically impaired. Something. Mm. Yeah. And 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 just as we wind up, yes, I would really like uh, you to tell us how what you really need, what you really need the society, mm. other people, and the systems, or how the how you how you want them to be able to relate with you people as as unique as you are how you want to, how do you want to, to interact with you or, or what needs to be done what needs to be changed what needs to be viewed differently from what is but from what is from what is seen as normal by the by the people who are, who are not physically impaired okay yeah so that, so, that, so, that, so that we have like a point where by the society and everybody else starts there's no that start seeing the, the the unique people just as they are without any, any without any disregards or any judgment or yeah. Uh, basically, yeah. The, the starting point is understanding who these people are, okay, and uh, being being able to understand them is what is the first position that any person can take. Because most of the time you find that these unique people or people living with disabilities themselves face that situation where they, they are struggling to identify themselves with the society. So if these people understand who we are, we are going to express ourselves as we are. Yes. So as much as they support, they do everything, understanding us is a big point. That's the, that's the primary primary point that's the primary place to understand so uh, basically I can say institutions we, we need to have institutions like we don't need uh, special institutions we need institutions where we can be compatible with the other children as young as possible yeah. yes. so it's just a normal school but it also has its own yeah, facilities the facilities should be very compatible be inclusive yeah, yeah. so because uh, as much as oh, uh, I enjoyed being in a special school, yeah. the best thing is uh, as as soon as possible. 
children should be interacting with these people as early as possible mm-hmm. so that they understand that being uh visually impaired vi- being physically impaired is not a situation that makes you different as much as i look different or i seem different we are all equal it's the yeah. definition of difference yes. that comes in you're all, you're all norm- you're normal you're just uh, you're, all, you're just you and the and other person you're not any different at all yeah we are actually the same yeah. it's just the, the difference that is portrayed by character you see the character is something very different so if you can't understand there's someone who cannot see there's someone who cannot walk on their own there's someone who can do some things on their own a child needs to understand so you see a child wakes up they have no limbs they have to crawl and there's another child who wakes up they can walk and move around as much as possible so if this child understands that there is this this other person there is there is this character yeah in our society so they grow integrating them into their normal systems so it's like putting these two children in a different situation all the way to adulthood and you expect them to integrate perfectly it's going to be a very hard a very hard process yeah that's that literally sums it all because you have to start from the root you have to teach the children as young as they are yeah because easily as you teach that kid from the age of 3 that this person is normal yeah. there's no there's no way at 20 years you'd be discriminating the other person yeah they won't but you can't if you've not taught that person at that age you can, there's no way you can teach such thing them at 20 it's it's going to be it's difficult going to be very difficult yes okay thank you thank you thank you so much for taking your time today yes of your of your of your duties to just come here and and talk to us okay as a as a unique person giving giving us an insight on one random stories and everybody who is been this episode i hope you can learn and take take a word from nyamongo and and really learn that the unique people are just normal like any any other, any other person and and the and the biggest part is understanding them as said by nyamongo and that comes as the main thing understand them they don't really need your help that much but just need to understand them as normal people and then from there we can start with, we can start with the, with the other things and for today nyamongo yes it's been a pleasure having you on one and one stories and i'd really like to have you back on stage talking other things cuz you seem to be a very resourceful person thank you so much and full of so much insight and knowledge and wisdom yeah so would really love to have you on one of our stories soon enough and it has been really a pleasure for me it has even been i've learned more about unique people yes than than i thought i knew yes i've i've say i've i've, 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 I've learned that there's so many things that, that i view differently that now I can, I, I, i can start viewing them from another perspective yeah <laughs> and so many also the people who are watching who are going to watch this episode and who are watching it are going to learn how to deal with unique people and that's going to be a very good starting point for anybody who didn't understand them because even me i didn't yes yes definitely i was not going to judge them but you see i didn't understand them yeah because you, you cannot you cannot judge somebody but you can't understand them yes so for me it has been a, it has been a, it's been a, it has been very very insightful for me as an individual even for the viewers it's going to be very insightful uh, they can take one and one and twos from you but today it has been a very this has been a very much pleasure to have you on set thank you so much thank you